So in this video we're going to be using our distorted portrait and I'm going to be talking you through how to use watercolours to create skin tones. You're going to start off by mixing a base skin tone using white, yellow and a little bit of red. Mix this in the palette lid making sure that you're keeping the colours separate and just mixing them in the middle and then using that base skin tone what I would like you to do is add lots and lots of water so you create a very washed out thinned out uh, skin tone and you're going to start applying that to the areas on your source picture where uh, you've got those extreme lights of tones um, do only apply it in a small area work in a small area at a time and then once you've applied the light tones just add a tiny little bit more of the browns and the reds to darken those tones apply them over the top of the light wash that you've just applied constantly using your source image just in small areas as you can see that I'm doing there and then what I would like you to do is use a uh, wash your brush out so uh, it's completely free of any kind of pigment and then just dry it on a little bit of paper towel and then just using the actual uh, pigment so not the wash you're going to go in and add those darker areas once again go back into the water wash your brush out and just dry it so it's a very just damp brush and you're going to smooth out those lines uh, using your damp brush uh, just to blend those tones so they become more gradual you can see in that part at the base of the nose that I've got at least three different tones. I've got dark tones, mid tones and those light tones in there as well. And I'm just going to keep on applying the wash and going in with the same principle into other areas. Darken it as I go by using uh, just pigment with very little water and then using the damp brush to just smooth out those lines so I'm not leaving big dark lines. Finally, the last thing I'm going to do is go in with a, a very dark brown, not a black, a very dark brown with a predominantly dry brush uh, and just add it in some of those finer detail areas of dark shadow. Again, smoothing it out with my brush. But the key is very, very small steps of darker tones. Pause the video here and have a go at the steps before continuing with the next part of the task. So now you're going to move on to add in some of those darker tones and those finer dark details. The process is still exactly the same. You're going to apply that very, very thin uh, skin tone wash to begin with. But then you're going to build up layers of darker tone in and around, just selecting certain areas. But again, using a wash with a damp brush, dry your brush on that um, paper towel, and then just blend away the edges using uh, some of those lighter pigments as before to blend away those transitional lines between the two different tones. Once you've started to build uh, a good gradual uh, mid-tone uh, and a good transition from your lighter tones into your mid-tones, you can start layering that up with some darker tones using those very dark browns uh, in and around the edges. Keep looking at your source picture and only add those tones in and, away, in and around where it shows on your source picture. You can use uh, some thicker, uh, darker colours, but remember to uh, blend those away using a damp brush exactly like I'm doing now. It's really important to work in a small section at a time. It doesn't allow for the paint to dry and you'll still be able to mould and blend the paint to the gradual tones that you're uh, looking for. Uh, so work in a small section at a time but still repeat the process. Don't just jump a couple of three steps just because it's a, a different area. Still start with the lighter tones, applying the darker tones over the top and blending them away. Finally, once you've got all those, you're happy with the tones, you can just add some very, very thin areas of detail, such as the darker creases in and around the eye or underneath, and those little wrinkles in the skin. Remember, you've got a whole array of different tones in that palette to select from. Use them as much as you can, using small steps between each transition of tone.
pause the video here and have a go at the steps before continuing with the next part of the task. In this next part of the video, you're going to see that I'm going to start to add some of those darker tones and a little bit more detail in and around the eye. Uh, I'm working in the area above the eye and also some of those finer lines in and around the actual eyeball. Uh, I'm adding some very, very thin, fine lines, uh, darker lines, to create those little elements of detail. And now I'm working in and around the outside, adding some darker tones to add some real depth to the eye. With the pupil itself, start off with some darker tones, but of colour. Do not use a black, even though it may appear black in the picture. Use a very, very dark brown. Remembering to leave a small area of highlight and some darker edges to your pupils. Once you've got the pupil in, what I want you to do is use a very, very light washed out grey just to add a little bit of shadow in the edges and the top of the pupil. So you can see that I've used a grey pigment there, I've used a very uh, washed out amount of water and I'm just adding a little bit into the corners of the eyeball. And now at this stage I'm going to go back into the top, add in some of those darker skin tones and blending everything together just to get some real depth within the eye socket. Um, it creates a, a nice element of form and you can mix up some of those lighter dark, uh, tone, skin tones uh, and those uh, darker areas as well. Once again, pause the video here, complete the tasks in and around the eyeball. The last step I'm going to show you is uh, the distortion bit that uh, Harris uses really well. So uh, I've gone back into my portrait now using um, a pencil. And I'm going to add some of these uh, areas of swirls and lines in and around the cut out areas uh, using a very light pencil line just to create some more areas of distortion. And then using uh, the same technique I've used for the skin, uh, skin tone, so using a very uh, bright green, I'm going to go in with a very washed out uh, watery green and using the same technique with uh, a blue as well uh, similar to how we did the Marion Bolognesi um, wash watercolors uh, I'm going to blend those all together using elements of water and pigment and what I'm going to try and do is create this feel of uh, bending lines and a wave going through the portrait itself. And I'm doing that by adding some thick areas of pigment, exactly the same way that we do with our skin tones, and just blending those away using a damp brush. You'll notice again that I've uh, worked in small sections, so I'm not trying to do the whole thing in one go. That's because uh, I want the paint to stay wet on the page. If I leave it and go to a different area, it's going to uh, dry out a lot quicker. It's a lot harder to blend the colours together and create those smoother transitions. So just working over the top, and then finally, once it's started to dry a little bit, I'm going to go back into it and work over the top in some darker pigments using the very, very tip of the brush to create those strong, bold lines exactly like I'm doing now. It gives it that sense of a wave passing through the portrait. So that's it really. Uh, remember to keep using the video. Follow the steps and follow the instructions. You can obviously rewind and use those pause points. Remember to layer it up using uh, lighter tones and very small changes in the colour and the pigment to the darker tones.